Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Little Cookie Co. Welcome to my paint your own cookie tutorial. Now, if you've never heard of PYO cookies or paint your own cookies, basically the concept is you make a cookie for somebody to take some water, go on your paint palette and paint an edible cookie, which is so cool. So I've made these for lots of favors for birthday parties or, you know, just for kids to decorate and have fun. It's a great way to get the little kids involved or even adults. I know some that love to do it as well. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to show you a couple of different cookies um, or different ways, I guess, to make these PYO paint your own cookies. Uh, I'm going to use like a rectangle type shape here. It's a bigger cookie and this will have the picture on it as well as your paint palette. And then I'll show you another cookie where you can have the paint palette separate. Um, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna do your basic outline here and flood on this cookie. And if you need any help with icing recipes, cookie recipe, um, how to make them, so on, consistencies, I have all the tutorials on my channel. So if you need any help, you can go through that. And I'm just gonna do it in white here. I find white is the best base to have because we want the colors to show up nice and bright when anybody's painting them. So white is always good to have as the base. And we're gonna set this aside to dry and make sure it's nice and dried. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our design. So think of it as a coloring book. You basically wanna make the outline and whoever's gonna be painting it is gonna be painting your picture that you outline here on the cookie. So I always like to, tr to practice a bit on a paper towel or some parchment paper um, just to see how my design is going to go and see my proportions and things and so on. So with this, we want to remember our paint palette is going to go on this cookie. So I'm making sure to put my design a little bit off to the right so I have enough space to have my palette there. So I'm going to do a giraffe. Now keep in mind, um, if you are doing this for, let's say, smaller kids that aren't, you know, very great at painting or coloring, you want to make a simpler, you know, big design that's easy for them to paint. Um, if they're older kids or adults, you can definitely do a more detailed design. I would say this is a little bit on maybe the more detailed side because it's smaller spaces. And so if you have smaller kids, they might make a kind of big mess out of it. And so if you want something a little bit easier, keep the design nice and large and not too many details. Another trick um, that people like to do, the outline color of the icing, they like to either make it light gray or even white. Um, I did it black just for this video so you can see really well where the design is. But keep in mind when you wet royal icing, it will run and so if you have again smaller kids and they wet the brush quite a bit with water sometimes the black does streak into the paint color while they're painting so having a white outline is also a great alternative and now i'll show you i have an example let's say of a butterfly here and this is just the shape of the cookie and the paint palette is going to be a separate cookie so i'm just going to outline as usual and I'm using my thicker consistency. I always like to use two consistencies. For me, it works a lot better because I find I can flood cookies much faster with looser icing. And I don't have to wiggle my cookie, you know, smooth and the icing settles on its own and I don't have to worry about it coming off the edge. And any indents into the cookie, like whenever there's sort of a corner but facing towards the middle of the cookie, I like to overline that because the icing tends to seep over those edges really easily. So then I always try to make my lines a little more, more inside. That way it keeps the icing nice in its place and it doesn't run over the edge. So here's a little bit of a simpler cookie. I'm kind of trying to keep the pattern or the outline kind of nice and open with bigger spaces so that whoever's coloring it, you know, they have a lot of room to paint around and not going to mess it up. And again, I'm doing it in black but you can really outline in any color. Um, you can do white. It doesn't show up as strong of a contrast as black but you can still see it and whoever's painting it will see it really well as well so that's also an alternative and then here i just have a little rectangle here and this is going to be my paint palette so this will go with the butterfly cookie. 
and because I don't have any space to put my little paint dots on them, this will be like an extra cookie that I have to go with that. So I'm just flooding, you know, outlined first, now I'm flooding my cookie as normal. And I just have to do it white, you can do it any color, it doesn't really matter, but just to keep it simple. And always make sure that you leave these to dry. Royal icing takes about eight or more hours to fully completely dry. To do the designs on top with the black icing or if you're gonna do the outline in white, you don't need it fully dried, you just need it um, crusted enough that you won't make any indents if you're touching your bag to the, to the cookie. But before you bag them or pack them up, you definitely wanna leave them out overnight uncovered so that the icing fully dries. So now onto the paint dots. So first I'm gonna take my thick white icing. So this is my outline consistency. And I'm just holding my bag steady in one spot on some parchment paper and putting pressure on my bag, trying to hold it as still as possible and I'm getting these nice little kind of dots. If you have a little peak or anything, you can just go in with your scribe. I have a tiny little peak here and just wiggle it smooth. You don't want it too runny because you don't want this you know, to spread out too much. So nice thick consistency, but you don't want it thick where you can't smooth out a peak either. And you can also use a template if you want to print out, you know, circles to have them all the same size. You can put it underneath your parchment paper and use that as a guide. I usually just do it this way. Um, they don't usually end up exactly the same size, but we're about you know trying to make things easier and quicker so I don't mind if they're a little bit different sized. And a good thing about this is you can actually pre-make these and keep them around. They're kind of like royal icing transfers where you let them fully dry and once they're dry you can keep them in a container or like a Ziploc bag. Keep them in a nice cool dark place. They're like sprinkles basically and you can use them when you need them so you might as well mix a few extras for next time. So now what I'm gonna do is take some uh, airbrush color. Now I'm using airbrush color because it's thinner and it's a lot more liquid, so it's easier to paint on my dots. I already have these on hand, so it's easy for me, but they also come in very small bottles as well and I find it the easiest, smoothest way to do your paint dots. You could also use gel color, but you would have to thin it down with some vodka um, or alcohol and kind of mix it around, but I find it still does get grainy. And it's a very small amount of alcohol that actually ends up on the dots and most of it does evaporate. But if you are worried about that with kids or you know adults, then this is a great uh, way to avoid that whole thing. And what I'm going to do is basically paint the dots here. The dots are fully dry. Well, I'll be honest, mine are almost dry. I'm trying to rush through the process of filming here. So they aren't fully, fully dry. So I'm trying to be careful here and not push too hard. But the idea is they're supposed to be fully dry. So when you go to paint them, you won't have any issues. So you can see it's nice and bright. I personally like to do two to three layers of color on each dot and the reason being is I like when you know someone's painting my cookie that they get a nice strong color out of it if you do one layer like this when they wet their brush and they go to um, take the paint off it sometimes ends up a very very light color so it really depends on what you're going for if you want a nice pretty colored dot then you might want to not do too many layers of color but if you care more about the painting side of it and how you know dark your color comes, then you wanna put on more color. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have red, yellow, and I'm gonna continue on with some green and blue. And you can do any color, really doesn't matter. And I wanna dry each layer before I put on another layer. If you have a fan, um, it's great to put on them, it dries it a little bit quicker and you want it almost dry before you put the next layer on. I've got a forest green here. It's really, really dark, so it almost looks black on the dot. When you paint it, it won't come out black, but if you're looking for you know, a pretty 
paint palette. You know, you might not want to include really dark colors like this. I didn't have any other green, unfortunately, in my airbrush colors. This is all I had, so kind of went with it. And then we just continue on until we've done our, you know, two to three layers, whatever you're happy with. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that the first layer has dried, I can go ahead and do my second layer. Now you can notice, you know, the color is getting a little bit darker as I'm putting my second layer on. So if I did a third one, it would be even darker. So it really depends, like I said, what you're going for. Um, you know, if you want a strong paint color, but you really want pretty nice bright colored dots, then, you know, maybe just do one to two layers. And if you want a really, really strong color painting, you don't care what color dots are, then you just go with, you know, three layers or so. So once they're dried, the colors, I have three layers on here, so they're a little bit dark. I'm gonna dust them with some cornstarch. The reason I'm doing this is because it takes a lot to dry, especially that I've layered on so much color. And so the cornstarch absorbs the extra moisture. And so lay it on nice and thick, you know, leave it for a few minutes or so, and then you can brush it off. I usually like to brush them when they're on the wax paper. And then, and of course, I let them dry before I do this. I don't want to, you know, brush them right away with, you know, absorb the excess color. But once they've almost dried, they'd have time to dry. I'll go in and brush them because they will get on your hands as you touch them. And if you bag them, you know, they'll get the color on the bag. So this is a great way to make sure that you don't get any, you know, color transfer anywhere. So I just brush them off. They look a little dusty, which is fine. We'll get it later. But I just want to make sure all sides are nice and covered and I just like to leave this here especially if I'm going to leave a few for extra for later. I'll definitely leave a thin layer of cornstarch just to make sure that they stay nice and dry. And once they're fully dry they should easily pop off your bag so you can just pick them off with your fingers or you can use your scribe there to pop them off. Some of mine you can see have little divots in them because I didn't wait for them to fully fully dry before I started painting them. So the, you know, the wet of the airbrush color kind of eat, ate away at the icing a little bit, but so as life happens, doesn't have to be perfect. So here I've got my nice um, little paint palette cookie here. I've chosen my colors and I'm going to put them on to the cookie. So I'm just using my thick royal icing here, just putting a dollop of icing and that's what I'm going to use to glue it onto the cookie. You don't want to put too, too much. Oh, it will seep out the sides there. I got a little bit of seepage, but that's okay. And you also want to make sure that your cookie that you're gluing them on is fully dry. You don't want to be pushing down when it's not dry or you will crack your icing. So if you have a fan or a dehydrator, it usually speeds up the process a lot. Um, otherwise, you have to wait a few hours, if not more, for them to dry fully. Try not to touch them too much with my fingers because I don't want to take that layer of cornstarch off and I don't want to rub the color off. So once I usually have them on and the icing is dry, I'll dab a little bit more cornstarch on them just to you know, absorb any excess that I took off with my fingers. And then I'll brush it off with a nice clean brush. And that usually gets rid of all the excess cornstarch and you can't really tell that it's there at all. So now our paint palette is done. So now we can move on to our giraffe cookie here. And this one is gonna have the paint palette right on the cookie. So I left a nice space for our paints and I'm gonna put four colors here. So again, I'm just putting a dollop of icing on the back and then gluing them on with that icing. So everything here is edible. You know, it's glued on with the icing, the paint color that's, you know, the food coloring that you use to color your cookie icing anyways. 
So, you know, once people paint them, they can eat them after. You can move them around a little bit when you glue them down. So if they're not exactly in the right spot, you can kind of shift them into the right spot. Um, but after a while, because thick icing does dry a lot quicker than thinner icing. So if you need to move it, do it right away. And I usually try, like I said, my dots aren't all the same size. So I try to pre-pick kind of the ones I'm going to use and try my best to match up the sizes. But again, it's not the end of the world if you don't. You can see I'm kind of getting some transfer on my fingers there. So if you want to push down, I didn't let them fully dry just, you know, for the video to film. So I'm going to dust some cornstarch on here, a nice good layer. And then I'm going to nicely brush them off. So that kind of gives you two options of, you know, if you want to design or you want to pipe your own on a big cookie, what you can do. And now with the extras I have, I can just throw them in a Ziploc bag here or in a little container of, you know, old sprinkles you have or whatever empty container you have, you can put them in there and keep them for the next time you make them. All right, now it's time to paint some cookies. So you just take regular water, you have these little paint brushes and you know, dab a little water on there, get that color on the brush and you just go ahead and paint. And it's that simple. And it's really, really cool. When I first learned about these, I thought, you know, this is the best idea ever. It's so much fun to be able to, you know, make some art and then eat it after. And you know, it's almost like your customer gets a part of the cookie process. And you can really be creative. You can choose any color you want. And you know, the more water you put, obviously the thinner your color will be, but if you get, you know, right in there, um, you can get a nice thick layer of color, which is great. You can see my red here on the giraffe is super bright and intense, which I love. I love when you get a nice bright color. That's from the layers and layers there. And the more color you use, the more you'll see it coming off the paint dot. So if I only had one layer, it wouldn't be as strong as that. And same thing here with the butterfly. We're gonna go ahead and paint it. We have our little cookie palette here right beside me. Again, you know, you can buy these little paper palettes, but I think this is really cool too. So if you have a smaller cookie, you don't have to have to have such a giant cookie to make, you know, your paint palette on with your design. And these are a little bit easier to outline. You could even have a blank butterfly cut out. You know, you don't have to do the outline and people can just freely paint as much as they want. So, so many options and ideas. And that's it. Now you guys know how to make paint your own cookies. I really hope you give them a try. Let me know how it goes. And as always, thank you so much for watching and supporting me. Happy baking.